Hi everyone, spring is here, summer is around the corner, and at least for me, I think I'm starting to step into a bit of a creative era. This time of year always gets me feeling super inspired and creative. I think it's just the sun and the warm weather and nature coming to life. I just always find myself feeling so energized. So come play in May with me. As usual, we'll start with reviewing last month's goals, then we'll get into May goal setting, and then I'll take you for a little monthly reset in Notion where I'll show you how I build out my May monthly dashboard. Before we start, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this type of planning inspo style video. And with that, let's get into it. Okay, let's start off with an April goal review. So last month I did skip my monthly plan with me video to do a quarterly reset where I set my goals for all of quarter two. So if you wanna watch that video next, I'll leave a link down below in the description. But here are the goals that I set for myself for April. Okay, so the first thing on this list is reworking my project workflow. So I have another project that I work on outside of this YouTube channel and I do that with a teammate. And we had been just having some trouble syncing up our workflow and it was definitely causing some stress for both of us. So we really wanted to make sure we spent some time sitting down to really talk about what was working and what wasn't working about our workflow so we could make some improvements and see what we can change to make it a little easier on both of us. And I'm so happy to report that we actually did this. Me and my team teammates sat down to have a conversation to talk about what wasn't working in our workflow and come up with some ideas for how do we improve it. It was so successful. I'm so happy we did it. I think when it comes to work, you know, we all have our own kind of like set of conditions in which we best thrive and are able to do our best work. And then when you're working on a team, it's like you have multiple people's like needs and preferences and workflows that you're trying to integrate into one in order to make sure that, you know, everyone can do their best work at the same time. And so so often we don't actually spend the time trying to get to know our coworkers work styles and we don't communicate what we ourselves need and then that's what kind of leads to friction on a team and of course it can be really uncomfortable to talk to coworkers about when things aren't working but you know at the end of the day we all just want to have the smoothest possible work experience like we all are just trying to get through our work tasks with as much ease as possible and by just getting aligned as a team about what we each need to get our work done we can make each other's lives so much easier. Anyways, I am so happy that I did this with my teammate. We are already feeling the positive impact of these conversations. So yeah, that's a goal accomplished. Okay, so the next goal was stabilizing my YouTube content flow, which basically means I'm trying to work for quarter two on posting one video a week on my YouTube channel. And I think so far it's actually been quite a success. I had really faltered a little bit there at the beginning half of this year or the beginning quarter of this year, but we are at the end of April now and I've posted a YouTube video or a YouTube short once a week. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna to continue to work on this throughout the quarter, but this is something that I would say is a goal accomplished so far. <laughs> the next goal was doing some spring cleaning and clearing out some of our wedding stuff, like wedding decor and items from our wedding, which was last year at this point that we still have lying around the apartment. And it is the last week of April right now when I'm filming this. And this is something that we are actually working on this week. So I think by the time that this video goes live, I will have this goal accomplished. In addition to the wedding stuff, the spring cleaning also includes getting a couple other like house projects Projects done. We have a closet that we're really trying to get organized and clean out, get rid of some old stuff, bunch of clothes that I need to donate. There is a bunch of little tiny tasks that we're trying to get done as part of the spring cleaning, but I mean, it's happening. And the secret of this was me and my partner, Bert, we literally put it in our calendar as this week is spring cleaning week and we're going to keep our schedules really light this week. So we have time to actually work on this. And that's what we did. So that is this week, it is happening, and I consider that a goal accomplished. All right, so the next goal is related to my larger quarterly goal of increasing my income streams. And one thing I wanted to do was accept one new client this month. This is something that kind of fell off of my radar and I wasn't able to do this month, but I am going to keep it as a goal for May. The next goal here has to do with my goal of working a little bit on my personal identity narratives. So this one's a little hard to explain, but basically what I'm trying to do in this quarter is I'm trying to spend some time getting some clarity around myself, how I see myself, how I see the work that I'm doing, and just feeling a sense of 
confidence in that personal narrative and feeling a sense of integration. Like I want to feel like I can really embrace the work that I'm doing right now as part of my identity, part of who I am and how I see myself. I feel like because I'm in a bit of a new kind of work path right now, I am kind of struggling to kind of integrate this new work into how I see myself. I think a lot of how I see myself is still tied up in a lot of my old work and things that I used to do in the past, but I'm no longer doing right now. And I really think it'll help me increase just like my confidence and my self image to be able to really integrate my new work into my identity. So part of my goal, it's so heady. It's very hard to explain. It's a longer conversation. If anyone is interested or, or relates to any of this, I would love to know down below in the comments, but Part of my goal for this quarter is to just really work on that kind of personal narrative and identity integration, if that makes sense. So this goal is one that is going to carry throughout the whole quarter. And this month in the month of April, the thing that I wanted to do was to just kind of start doing some reflections on my personal narrative and my work narratives and just, just start to reflect on it and journal a little bit, I'm reflecting on my work and the narratives that I have and the language that I'm using to describe myself and my work and just starting to see what language is resonating with me and what language I am the most excited to adopt for myself. But this is a goal accomplished. I had a whole couple of days where I really just set aside a whole lot of time to just journal a lot about how I felt about all of this stuff. And finally, the last goal that I had here for April was a finance check-in with my partner, B. Burt. K, Kelly, B and K. <laughs> so we were recently married last year and we are working on just like doing some like financial integration and integrating our finances with each other. And this is something that we have been meaning to do. I did set a goal for us to be able to do this in April. In particular, one of the conversations that I want to start was just like setting income and spending intentions. This is one that I wasn't able to do in April, but that's okay because we did actually mark out, same with the spring cleaning, me and Bert have marked out a week in May where we are going to have some conversations related to our finances. So that is on the calendar and if it's on the calendar, it's happening. So um, it didn't happen in April, but it is on the docket for May. So those are my April goals largely. I think I actually got a lot of them done and they were sort of all amorphous goals, if that makes sense. Like they weren't like concrete things as much as they were like ideas and conversations and kind of like mind spaces, like head spaces that I wanted to be in. Because I set all of these quarterly goals, this is gonna step one of all of these quarterly goals. So a lot of it is just kind of like laying the groundwork for more concrete things to happen later on in the quarter. So to me, I feel pretty good about everything that I accomplished in April, even though in a certain way, I didn't accomplish a lot. <laughs> I mean, I did, but I didn't, but I did at least accomplish all of my goals. And this is really the thing about setting realistic goals. When you set realistic goals, you accomplish them. And they are all kind of laying the groundwork for the goals I'm going to continue working on for the next two months. So that's April. Let's move on to the May goal setting. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to give the video a like. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, so let's talk about May goals. Here are the goals I'm setting for myself for the month of May. For May, I kind of have an interesting thing going on with my goals. So as part of my journey to chat, to feel really connected with the work that I'm doing right now, I have decided to give myself a 30 day challenge. So it's basically the whole month of May, but you know, sometimes it's fun to turn it into like a bit of a challenge. <laughs> basically it is a 30 day challenge to reignite my creative spark and kind of reconnect with the human spirit. Hmm. I kind of want to make a whole video about this, but basically what I'm trying to do with this challenge is get myself to really feel excited and invigorated and energized as I'm stepping into this new work stream of mine. And I set this challenge up to basically get myself to do things that will help me really feel inspired and feel kind of creatively energized. And so here are the things that are on my 30 day challenge. Number one, attend two to three in-person events in my local area where I live. Number two, have a virtual coffee date with an inspiring person one time a week. Number three, take a course. So some kind of class, workshop, mastermind, that kind of thing. Number four, accept two new clients or creative gigs. And number five, journal about the highs, lows, and learnings as I'm doing each of the other things. 
And then at the end of the 30 days, what I want to do is sit down and try to formally write out my personal narrative when it comes to the work that I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And I think a concrete way for me to do that is going to be to just refresh my personal website. And that's the 30 day challenge. There are a lot of reasons as to why I picked each task that is part of this challenge, but I don't want this video to get too long. So if you are interested in this 30 day challenge to reignite your creative spark, leave a comment down below so I know that I should make this video and subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay. So back to the May goals. Number one is to complete the 30 day challenge myself. <laughs> Number two is hitting a 1k on YouTube. Ah! It's really scary to even set that as a goal for the month, but I really do think that I am kind of on track to do that. Yeah, I think that now that I'm actually able to keep up with my posting schedule, I think I'm going to really be able to get this content in front of more people. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to be able to hit this goal. So that is the goal I'm setting for myself in May. <laughs> okay, so the last goal that's on my list for May, and as you notice, there's only really three goals. I mean, one of the goals is completing my 30 day challenge, which is long. <laughs> it has a lot of like sub things underneath of that challenge, but that's why my actual May goal list is just three items. But the last one is setting up affiliate links. If you don't know, this is a very common way that YouTubers, influencers, anyone that you're like interacting with on social media, this is a very common way that they make money. Basically, as I post videos, if I put links in the description saying like, you know, check out this makeup product that I use, if you guys buy it, you can buy it at the exact same price as regularly, but I get a small commission if I, you know, recommend it to you. But this is something that I'm trying to set up because like I said, I'm trying to add more income streams and this is one that's a very common one for people who are on YouTube. So, well, it's kind of embarrassing to talk about. Okay, a really weird thing about being a YouTuber, which I guess I am now, is that as a planning YouTuber, like I'm trying to show you guys the things, my goals and the things that I'm working on, but the things that I'm working on right now is growing this YouTube channel, which is the thing that you're watching. Like it's like a kind of a, it's a little weird, <laughs> but um, I hope you guys don't mind me being a little transparent about the things that I'm working on related to this channel, because I mean, that's just the honest, that's, that is honestly what I'm working on. So anyways, affiliate links, that's something I'm going to try to set up in May. <laughs> Okay, so those are my May goals. Let me know what is your number one goal for the month of May. Drop it in a comment down below and let's all cheer each other on. Okay, now let's get into the Notion reset. I created a new monthly dashboard in Notion for every single month. So let me take you into my Notion and we can do this reset together. Okay, so this is my Notion kind of main landing page life hub. And then I have a page here where I have all of my monthly dashboards. And down here, you can see I have a button that I created that basically allows me to automatically generate a new monthly dashboard like template where I kind of start from to create each new month. And here's what that looks like. And this is the kind of general format that I usually have for my monthly dashboards, but then I go in and customize it, change up the colors, add in new images and stuff based on the vibes, the goals, the intentions that I have set for that month. So let's start designing this May dashboard. First of all, I just made everything a little bit smaller so it fits a little bit better. So this is for May, 2024. I'm just going in here right now and filling out all of the general information. So first things first, I'm gonna just type in my May goals that I set. So those are the three goals that we talked about. Down here, this is where I usually will then break down those goals. Basically, I use this space to kind of assign the different steps of each of my monthly goals into a specific week. And then at the beginning of each week, when I do my weekly planning, I'll check this section so I know what I have pre-planned to work on that week. And that way, each week, I know that I'm making progress towards those larger May goals without having to, at the start of every week, do an intense, like, let me think about what those goals are. What am I working toward? I'm kind of doing all of that like thinking work for myself right now in this monthly planning session so that in the week to week, at uh, the start of every week, I'm just trying to like get into my Monday. I can't really do big picture thinking. So I'm doing that big picture thinking now and just assigning those steps into a specific week. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and break down these May goals and assign them to specific weeks. I just went ahead and pasted the different parts of the 30 day challenge for me to reference for myself right here on the side. And that way I can know what I need to assign out. So attending some live events in my local area. So maybe in the first week of the month, I will 
research local events so that way I can start like plugging them into my calendar so that takes care of that piece of it is researching those events let's see scheduling a virtual coffee date so that means I'm gonna need to reach out for coffee I'm gonna have to come up with a list of people that I want to reach out to come up with a list of people to coffee date with and then I want to reach out to at least one person Probably have to do that each week or at least the first three weeks or four weeks. I'll do that. I might not actually, I mean, I might reach out to a couple people week one and then have my coffee date scheduled for the whole month, but I'll at least put it in each of these weekly buckets. So I just remember to do it. As for taking a course, I guess I'm going to have to research that too. Research a cool course that I might want to take this month. Um, some kind of class, workshop, mastermind, that kind of thing. Let me see what kind of course might be interesting to me, but I want to just research that in week one and then same thing, I'll kind of schedule it and slot it in for um, some time during the month. Because I want to accept some new clients, I'm going to have to email some clients. Oof, oh gosh. So it's starting to become a lot of stuff happening in a single week. So week one is starting to get a little crowded. So maybe I'll research the course more like week two. And then maybe I will reach out to one potential client and then I'll do that again in week three. Reach out to, maybe I should do one to two because they're not all gonna land, right? So one to two potential clients and I'll do that for this too, one to two people for coffee. And then I probably won't have to do it every week, right? Let's do the breakdown that way. And then journaling about highs, lows, and learnings. Okay, so these are supposed to happen at the end of the month. So maybe week four, I can do some synthesized challenge learnings. I kind of want to make sure that I'm journaling each week. So I'm going to add that here, journal about challenge, and I'll add that to each week. And then in week five, my website, refresh website and personal narrative. Okay, so you get the idea. Basically, I'm breaking down each of those goals and assigning them to a week. So then at the start of that week, I have a list of kind of tasks related to that bigger picture goal. And this is gonna help me make sure I am setting myself up to accomplishing that goal by the end of the month. <laughs> um, these other two goals are hitting 1K on YouTube. So this just has to do with staying consistent with my posting schedule, which I've already kind of set up that workflow for myself in April. So I don't really need to assign this to a specific week. Um, as for setting up affiliate links, as you can see, it looks like I'm kind of busier at the beginning of the month, kind of setting up for my challenge. So I think maybe setting up the affiliate links, that might be something maybe around the middle of the month, I can try to work on that, set up affiliate links. I think that's when I'll have the time for that. Okay, yeah. And that's the breakdown of what's going on each week or what I'm gonna do toward each of my goals each week. So at the start of every week of the month when I'm doing my weekly planning, I'm gonna reference these little breakdowns so that way I know to add these into my weekly kind of day-by-day to-do lists. One thing that I'm also gonna add in here are any events that I have going on each week. However, I'm gonna add that in off camera. Okay. Now that that's done, let's work on making this Notion template aesthetic because obviously right now it's looking pretty grim. So let's start with finding images. So if you've been here for a while, you know that I find my images for my Notion templates, Notion dashboards on Pinterest. This is the best way to make your Notion pages aesthetic is to find really cute imagery that really embody the mood of that Notion page. So for me, for the month of May, like I said, I'm trying to kind of tap into my creative energy, my creative spark, so to speak. So I want images that feel like that, that feel like the idea of tapping into kind of creative possibilities. So I already went on Pinterest and found some images. We have this 
sky imagery that I think looks really cool. I think it's just like, I was kind of saying that something about like the sunlight, that feeling of like being able to see the sky and it's so clear and bright, the sun being out and that kind of like brightness in the environment around me is very inspiring to me. So this is an image that kind of really reflects some of that energy for me. I have a couple of sky images that I pulled and we'll see which one, you know, I like the most. Flowers, of course, flowers, something about that really evokes the idea of creativity. So I have a couple images like that. And then I also have this image, which is a little bit more about that idea of like attending live events in my local community, which is part of my 30 day challenge. Um, I just envision myself kind of showing up at little coffee shops where events are being held and like getting inspired by the people around me. And so this image definitely feels like part of what I think I'm manifesting, so to speak, for May. When I envision what I'm doing in the month of May, it's a lot of this. <laughs> so I feel like this is a very appropriate image. So yeah, those are the images that I picked out. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the sky image because that's the one that was like kind of top of mind for me when I was thinking about what I wanted for my May dashboard was like a sky related imagery. So I'm gonna just start there and see where that takes me. I just literally right clicked, copied, and now command V pasting the image into Notion um, in order to have it show up there and it looks super cute. So on my monthly dashboards, I typically have the monthly spread or the month at a glance view along the top and then along the bottom this is where i have my week at a glance view so like every week i will refresh this like little weekly section and this is where i put all of my to-do items for each day of that week but i had kind of had this inkling that maybe i might want to merge these two for this month because i don't know i just kind of want to see those monthly goals those may goals front and center like every time i look at this dashboard i just want to be looking at those may goals because i kind of feel like it's going to help me stay on track with that 30-day challenge so i'm kind of thinking about reorganizing this template just a little bit to maybe add these this section up above um i'm gonna play around with this let's let's just see where it goes so usually I have more images and like a focus for the week around here. But one thing that I've noticed is that I, in my last few months, I don't tend to update my focus section at the start of every week. I just, I just don't tend to. And so I just feel like this section isn't really serving me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, but let me go ahead and take this weekly section and I'm going to try to move it up here. Let's see what we think. Is it too busy? All right, we're gonna trust the process. Let's trust the process. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of consolidated all the information to just be in one kind of view, but as you can see, it's looking a little cluttered. So I kind of think I need to work on making some information stand out a little bit more from the rest so it doesn't look so busy. So one thing that I might try to do is I'm kind of thinking about maybe turning these goals into call outs. So if you type in backslash and then the word call out, um, you'll get that come right up. Um, blue is actually kind of a good color, but I think we want like a cloud, right? because it's like cloud themed, right? Ooh, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna type in, put my each of my goals into one of these and then I'll duplicate that. Ooh, okay, I kind of like how this looks. Maybe actually I'll make those clouds blue or an emoji, cloud emoji. Ooh, cute! Okay, I'm kind of liking where we're going here. I sort of don't know that I need this affirmation section. I mean, I do need some affirmations right about now, but I feel like in my monthly dashboards, I have this section, typically have this kind of section in my monthly dashboards, but I feel like I haven't really been updating it or filling it out or referencing it very much. So that usually just tells me if I have a section of my planner, a monthly planner, weekly planner, whatever, that I'm not using, it's usually a sign that I should just get rid of it. So I think right now I'm just gonna get rid of this section, at least for this month, and just see how I do without it because maybe I don't really need it. Okay, that is looking so cute. I'm kind of loving it. 
I kind of feel like though these two compete, May goals with May, um, the May week one. What if I make this a different color or blue, but make it a different size? No, I kind of like it the same size, but does it look like it kind of competes a little bit? And are we writing the word May too many times? Like it's a little redundant. <sighs> Okay, let's change the color of this, this little calendar. So this is like a little widget. I get this widget from an app called Widget Box. So I'm gonna log in real quick. Okay, so I'll go ahead and look at my widget. You can customize the colors here. So I think I'm gonna go for some really cute little blue tones. And so once I update it here, then when I go back to the dashboard, I just refresh this page and it should update the colors. Okay, so you see that it updated here, the colors of that calendar. However, those colors are way too bright for the color scheme. Okay, that's pretty close to the color of like the natural like notion blue. The other thing that is really kind of not vibing with me right now is this little, this is my like habits tracker section. As you can see, it's very rudimentary. And basically all I do is I just fill out when I do the task, I'll fill it out like this. Like I'll change it from a not filled in star to a filled in star. Um, and this is how I track my habits. So for example, um, I try to make sure I'm on top of my chores once a week. It's basically just like a mental check-in, like have I done all the things that I'm supposed to do around the house? Like I just do a little mental check-in once a week. Typically that stuff is pretty automated, but in the times that it's not automated, um, it usually just takes one little check-in for me to like check back in, you know, like click back in and then start to get back on top of it. So I just try to do a little mental check-in with my chores once a week. And then if I do that once a week, five weeks in a month, that's what those represent. So that's how that habit tracker works. However, I have been kind of wondering if I should update my habit tracker a little bit. And I don't know, I haven't really figured out the answer to that yet of like how I would update my habit tracker or how else I would want to track my habits. Um, but for now, maybe what I'm gonna do is do the same thing that I did with the goals. I'm gonna put it inside of this little call out box. Just move it all in there so that way Again, it's just kind of creating like visual divides is basically what I'm trying to do. That kind of helps the eye like focus in on fewer things as opposed to like going everywhere when there's so many things on one page, you kind of have to use like color blocking to kind of help you. Yeah, you know, just divide things up a little bit. Um, this is pretty cute looking, I don't hate it. I have some other habits, these are outdated that I am working on. So let me type in the new habits that I am trying to stay on top of. So I am trying to do, uh, I have some vitamins that I'm supposed to be taking daily that I haven't been taking daily. So um, that's what that is all about. So these vitamins I'm supposed to take every day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put in a star for every single day of the month. So you can see I've basically like visually represented the month um, of May with stars and then I'll fill them out every day that I've done them. I'm also gonna paste these into the tracking section because I am trying to track my experiences daily too. So I'm gonna use that to help me remember to do my tracking. Movement, I am not doing, <laughs> I'm not doing daily, I'm doing that maybe once a week. So just the five stars is good for that. And same with reading, just wanna be reading a little bit every single week. So just the weekly tracker is good for that. Okay, I think maybe I'll keep the tracker like this for now. And should I make them hearts? For some reason, the stars are looking a little cluttered. I feel like it just looks a little cluttered right now. Maybe I'm just not vibing on them. I kind of want to switch them all to hearts. Humor me for a moment. Yeah, the hearts are like kind of cuter. I like them better. I'm gonna do the hearts. I'm gonna do the hearts. All right, this is gonna take me a minute. Give me a second. Ooh, okay, that looks 
so much better to me. I don't know why. Cute! Okay, I love it. I think that looks really cute. I think that's gonna be a really cute way for me to track my habits. And so maybe since I have hearts there, I'll also put the hearts here just to keep it a little consistent. That's pretty cute, right? What do we think? I'm like wondering if it's like looking still too busy, but I kind of feel like I like it. Like I like having those makeles right there next to my weekly task list. So every single day I'll be looking at this spread and I'll be seeing those goals right there in front of my eyeballs and I'll be seeing those habits right there in front of my eyeballs. So it's all in one place. I just kind of think it looks pretty good. It looks a little naked. It's almost like there's not enough imagery almost. Like I think images usually help add some of that like aesthetic element. Like I didn't even get to use a lot of images other than those clouds. Like this would have been cute to find a way to incorporate, but maybe that's just like a good place for us to land. Oh, here, I still need to add in a little, a little icon, gray cloud. I always have this issue. I'm always trying to use that cloud, but then it's like the gray is always like a little too gray. Okay, maybe uh, emoji, emoji. Okay, that's always the answer. <laughs> I think when this information is all filled out with my tasks, like it'll look a little bit more, you know, complete. You see what I'm saying? Like I feel like it'll look pretty complete when this is like not so empty and usually I have a lot of tasks on the to-do list so it looks pretty filled out. So maybe this is a pretty good place for us to land. I wonder if a cover image would also help. I mean, I could add, I mean, clouds are pretty generic. Uh, so I think it would be pretty easy for me to add a cover that involves clouds. So let's see, change cover, go to Unsplash, which is just a database of a bunch of images um, that they have built into Notion. And what if I just look up clouds? Um, I did this actually for, I want to say it was my, oh, it was my tutorial on how to build a weekly dashboard, a weekly planner. And um, I used clouds as like the theme for that as well. But you know, sometimes clouds are just the vibe, right? Check this out. Ooh, okay. Hmm. What about just sky? Okay. I have an idea. I'm gonna grab that image that I'm using right now as my kind of like sidebar image. I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. Save it to my desktop, I do wanna turn it. Maybe like that. Ooh, okay. Check this out. I basically took this image, I put it sideways and put it up here. Ooh, and that's kind of a vibe, right? Ooh, uh, okay, wait, I'm kind of liking that. I mean, it's a little monochromatic, but I mean like the cloud on cloud, but it's kind of nice. Okay guys, I think this is it. I love how this looks, honestly, the monochromatic cloud on cloud look and having everything related to the month, both the month and the weekly kind of planning spaces are in one view. I really like how this looks and that I'll be able to see my monthly goals every single day. Every single day I will be looking at this page so those goals are gonna be front and center right up in my face and same thing with the habits along the side. I kind of like this. I think that this might end up working well for me. I guess we'll see, it'll be a bit of an experiment. Usually I don't like so many things in one kind of view on Notion because I don't like to feel like there's too much going on, but I don't know. I just think this looks really pretty and airy and it makes me feel kind of excited. It makes me feel a little bit like creative, like there's so many possibilities, which is kind of the goal that I was going for for this month's dashboard. So I think that's our Notion reset. I think this is where we're landing and I think it looks really good. I think it's beautiful to be honest. That's the dashboard. I'm really looking forward to the month of May. I think it's going to be a really interesting and exciting and adventurous month for me because I'm trying out this 30 day challenge to reignite my creative spark. It's going to really get me out of my comfort zone, talking to a lot of new people out in the community. And I just think it's going to be really good for me. So I'm really excited. I love the way that Notion Reset, Notion Dashboard turned out. I think it really beautifully captures the mood that I'm in for the month of May and for just this season in general. So I love how this all turned out. And I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for that process. I know it's kind of like a funny creative endeavor. And you know, sometimes you just go try out a bunch of things before you land on something that feels right. But I think with Notion and with planning, you know, that's what you gotta do. You're trying to create a planning space to 
really inspire you and get you in the mood that you want to be in because if you're going to be looking at your notion dashboard every single day you just want it to feel exactly right and so I love taking this time at the start of every month to just design these monthly dashboards to be exactly what I need them to be and to really, really capture the goals that I am setting for myself. So I'm happy. <laughs> I'm sending you all so much love for the month of May. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next monthly plan with me video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.